Hi there. If you'd like some hints and tips about cooking for yourself because you're worth it, stay tuned to the next episode of Hilltop Stovetop. Hello and welcome back to Hilltop Stovetop, the show where we're teaching you how to make great meals in an ordinary kitchen. I'm sure that you're looking at me and going, Ellen, you forgot your apron. And I didn't forget my apron. Today is a little bit different episode. Uh, I want to talk to you about cooking for one or two people. And um, those of you that have been uh, watching my shows for a while know that I live alone but I still cook a lot. And so I wanted to help you folks out to uh, show you what I do with the leftovers and how I manage uh, that sort of stuff around the kitchen. So we're gonna do a little mini tour of things uh, in my kitchen so that you get some ideas. Now in today's world, uh, the single population is definitely one that is growing. I've been re reading a lot about that over the last uh, few years. Um, either uh, because you're an empty nester and so you're down from cooking for four or five people down to two, or, or you're divorced or you're widowed, um, or you're a young person just starting out on your own and you're used to watching you know, your family cook big meals, but all of a sudden you're down to cooking for just one and it's a little bit different. Now, before I retired, I used to work for a bank and I would see people all the time um, who were newly divorced, newly widowed, um, and all of a sudden didn't, you know, became malnourished almost. And even as a, even though I wasn't their healthcare provider, I still noticed that. Uh, and that was because they, you know, sort of, you see the old, old lady living on tea and toast, uh, or they don't know how to cook, or they are just kind of frustrated by it. Um, I would also see a lot of young people who would come to me and go, you know, like, why can't I save money? And we'd start going over their budget and look at their bank account and realize, you know, like every day you're going to the coffee shop and that's five bucks, so that's $150 a month. Or even if two or three times a week you're eating out and, you know, you don't, you don't leave a, a restaurant for, you know, between 30 to $50 easily and you do that a couple of times a week, well, that's $100 a week, that's $400 a month. And, and that's just kind of bare minimum kind of stuff. If you're eating out every day, it really, really adds up. Even going to um, you know, fast food, hamburger joint, I mean, it's $15, $16 um, for you know, a, a burger and fries and a drink and that sort of stuff. So by eating at home, um, you can economize. Um, and you can eat healthier. Um, if you eat a lot of processed food, you end up with um, a lot of uh, extra sodium and a lot of extra sugar. And when you cook for yourself, you have some control over that. And that's where you see a lot of um, older people in particular, where they're having problems with diabetes or with their blood pressure and that kind of stuff. And while they're eating convenience foods or, or they're uh, maybe eating out or they're not eating a balanced meal. So uh, one of the reasons I started this whole channel was to help people to eat healthier uh, and better food. So we're gonna do a little tour here of some hints and tips that I have here. First thing I'm gonna suggest that you do is um, get yourself a cookbook. And I know you can, get cook you can get recipes for everything on the internet. I certainly use it a lot myself. But sometimes having a cookbook is a good idea because it gives you inspiration. And I've got, I think, over 200 cookbooks myself. I'm a little bit of a cookbook junkie. Uh, but I still, I, and I make things up as I go along, but I also use them for inspiration. And I might see something in a cookbook that I like, but I'm not quite uh, happy with the, with the recipe. So then I'll go to the internet and I'll look for something else. But the key is looking for something if you're only going to have one cookbook, get something that has a variety of things and get something that's got pictures in it because that's a big inspiration for you is to, to look at the pictures and say, wow, you know, like that looks really good. I want to try that. Okay. 
you can get cookbooks that are specifically for cooking for one or two people. Uh, this is one that my stepchildren actually bought for me when, and when they'd moved out and it was just my husband and I. And uh, you, know, you have to uh, think in a different mindset when you change the number of people in your household. But every recipe that you see will say this is this serves two or this serves four or whatever. So even if you've got a, a mainstream cookbook, it'll tell you whether it's four servings or six servings, and you can either divide the recipe or you know that you're going to have leftovers. And we'll talk about leftovers in just a, a little bit. Um, so that's number one. Number two is your cooking utensils. Now, particularly if you're somebody that is used to having a big family. So you got to remember me, I went from having, um, you know, sort of family around and a husband and that sort of stuff. And then I, for a while, I ran a B&B. &B, and then I had international foreign exchange students staying with me. So hello, Aya and Ellie. And uh, so I was always cooking for bigger groups of people. Now all of a sudden I'm down to one and particularly with COVID, I don't even have company over for dinner anymore. So that's, that's changed things quite a bit. So a key there is knowing that you've got the right equipment. So rather than taking your old frying pan that you used to use when you had, you know, the three growing teenagers in the house, get yourself a smaller pan. Now this is an omelet pan, but it works for a whole lot of other things as well. And then that's just the, the diameter of my hand. You can cook a couple of eggs in there. You can cook a small amount of vegetables, um, any number of things without it being overwhelming. And the same goes for pots. Rather than having a big pot, go ahead and get yourself a little pot. This particular one, I just bought this at Value Village, a thrift store, it cost me $10. And it's a uh, KitchenAid, good quality pot. Um, you don't have to go crazy with that. Um, the other thing is, um, these are a couple of things that I've got from Pampered Chef. And uh, I've got two smaller ones. This is actually meant to go into a toaster oven. Uh, this one is a cake pan, but these are both really good for a single person versus this bigger one for a whole family. And I also have this, this grill, which I use on the barbecue a lot. So that's pretty awesome. Um, the other thing is nowadays, of course, there's so many electronic gadgets that work well. Uh, you've all seen me use my Instant Pot. This is a six quart Instant Pot, but you should also know that they do come in smaller sizes. This is just a three quart one. And I use this one a couple of times a week um, I make my porridge in it. I like porridge for breakfast, but I make porridge in that and then I put the leftovers into containers So I only have to make porridge twice a week, but and then the other days I heat it up in the microwave Microwave is another fabulous thing when you're a senior person or a single person not necessarily senior But a single person because you can have those leftovers and warm them up as an example uh, yesterday I made a big pot of minestrone soup um, I put it into containers, some of it I put in the freezer for future, and I've got a couple in the fridge, so I'm going to have that for my supper again tonight. I don't mind eating the same thing two nights in a row, but I don't like it 12 nights in a row, right? Uh, so you've got your microwave for that. The other thing is an air fryer. Um, that's relatively new technology, uh, but it's really good for a single person because just a little container like this fits into it. You can cook, you know, one chicken breast, one potato, any number of things just in a small amount without heating up the whole oven. And then there's our friend, the muffin tins. And this is kind of what prompted me to film this today, was I'd made up a big batch of baked beans. Now I've already done a video on the baked beans, and so there's no point in filming that again. But if I was to sit down to eat this whole thing of beans, I would explode, right? So what I do is I take it and I put it into muffin tins, freeze it. Once it's frozen, I can pop them out and put them in a big freezer bag and um, just have single portions. And there's a lot of things that you can do that you can put into muffin tins that are a nice single portion, just handy to warm up afterwards. Um, so speaking of putting things in the freezer, that's the other thing is invest in some... Um, freezer bags on a variety of sizes. So we've got small, medium, and large, depending on what you've, you've got. Um, 
and we'll we'll get into the shopping bit a little bit later on, um, but that's worthwhile. Um, you can get leftover containers. Now these ones are the semi-disposable, I'll say. I like these ones if I'm, um, say, sharing something with, with somebody else. I don't worry about getting them back again, uh, but they're not good for really long term. Um, so for the long term sort of things, invest in some good quality um, leftover containers. These ones are glass. Uh, they go in the microwave. They've got a really good seal on the lid and things stay in the freezer for a long time. The other thing about these is it's got a nice flat top so that you can label them well. Now I try to remember to label things with my label maker. Uh, a piece of masking tape with a handwritten note on it is just as good. Uh, two reasons. One is you say to yourself, I'm going to remember what that is when it goes into the freezer, but you never do. You look at it when it's this lump of stuff and you go, is that the lasagna or is it the baked spaghetti or is it the soup? I can't remember. Um, and then the other thing is putting the date on it because even though uh, having things in the freezer uh, keeps it longer, it doesn't keep it forever, right? And um, so speaking of freezers, most people have a freezer on their refrigerator. I use my refrigerator freezer for the open bags of things. So once I've opened up a bag of vegetables, I put it in here rather than in the big freezer. And if I, you know, we all know my trick with the mushrooms. Well, there, that's in there. Um, if you chop up an onion, but you only need half the onion, put the other half chopped in the freezer already. And the same with celery. And this is a half a can of tomato paste. Um, all those things are handy right into the kitchen. So the other part is my big freezer. Now I have a very big freezer because I moved it with me when I moved from the house to the apartment. Probably bigger than I need as a single person, but it's still a handy thing to have. So we'll do a little tour of the, the freezer now. Just hang on. All right, so here we are. Now, if you have a choice about freezers, I personally love this upright freezer because I can see everything in it. If you only have a chest freezer, that's fine. Uh, but one trick that I have is I do sort things into little baskets. The key with a freezer is if you're putting stuff into containers like this, make sure that you buy ones that have holes in them so that the air can circulate because that's a, a big thing for the um, uh, how well a freezer works. If the air can't get around things, it's not going to work. Um, so we've got leftovers here. We've got leftover minestrone soup. We've got leftover lasagna and baked spaghetti. Um, the, these are hamburger patties. So when I make up a bunch of hamburger patties and I'm firing up the barbecue, I barbecue them all at once, then put them in the freezer, and then I can have just one hamburger later on um, without having to go through the whole process all over again. I do have uh, spare buns in there and uh, bread. I've got, um, the, these are great for a single person to buy fish that is individually frozen and, and packaged so that you can pull out just one piece of fish. Um, I try to sort things in the basket so this one has chicken in it. So what I do is I still buy the, the big uh, family packs of chicken which are less per pound, but then as soon as I get home, I take them out put them into individual packages in these lovely little Ziploc bags and freeze them individually. And if I've got people over for dinner, I can take out two or three of them, but that's handy. Then I've got, uh, this one has got all of my beef type things in it. Uh, this one has got all of my frozen vegetables. Uh, this one has all the pork. And I think we've talked about this where I bought a big loin of pork and then individually cut it into sizes that I wanted. When we did the smooth, the uh, stuffed pork chops, we talked about that. Um, and down at the bottom, I have um, sort of sundry meat. So I've got things like, um, I bought, bought a, uh, a kuba saw and I cut it into portions rather than having that big whole ring that I have to eat forever. Cut it into portions and freeze it. Um, the same 
when I buy bacon, I split it four rashers of bacon into a package, which is a reasonable amount for one person to eat. Again, I can take out more than one. When I made the baked beans, I took out three of these to put into the baked beans. And I've got sausages in there. And I do cheat a little bit and buy the, the pre-stuffed chicken breasts because these are individually packaged and real handy to, to cook up. And again, I got more, more leftovers, but you see when you've got good quality containers for your leftovers, they stack nicely in whatever freezer you got, whether it be this one or just the one that's on your, uh, on your refrigerator. And then in the door, I've got my frozen shredded cheese and the hot dogs are for the dog because that's her training treats. Um, we've got the puff pastry. We all know that I love having some puff pastry in the freezer. And I've got fruit. And you see that I, I'm not afraid to go to the, the big box stores and get huge bags of frozen stuff because you can take out just what you want. I can open that up, take out a little bit, put it in the fridge, let it thaw out, and have that to use. So there's my freezer. All right, so the last thing is things that would be on your pantry shelf. So that might be things like pre-made uh, spaghetti sauce, um, canned tomatoes, canned fruit, canned any number of things. Um, when you're used to cooking for a big group, you of course want to have the big cans of things because it's more cost effective. Sometimes it makes sense to buy the smaller cans, particularly when you're, uh, when you're cooking for just one. Uh, for me to have a, a can of tomatoes like this, that doesn't take much for me to eat it up. But if I have a big can, then all of a sudden I have to make a bigger portion of things. And the same with the spaghetti sauce. They say um, if I wanted to make just some pasta and spaghetti sauce, I can cook one portion of pasta. I can go to, you know, grab a bunch of macaroni like this, cook just one portion of this, but I don't need the whole bottle of spaghetti sauce. So that's where if I just use part of this, if I've got good quality storage containers, I can put the rest of that into the freezer. You know, you know how it is. You, you put the rest of this jar in the fridge and you say, I'm going to eat that in a couple of days and you don't. And three weeks later, you look at it and it's all moldy and you end up throwing out food and wasting it. So by being able to transfer it into another freezer safe container and freeze it, then you are more likely to use it up. The other thing are these little clips. Uh, these are just from the dollar store. And if you have a bag of frozen vegetables or a part bag of pasta or something, you can clip it shut and it's gonna seal up and not dry out as much. Um, so that is my hints and tips for being a single person eating. Um, and that goes for single people or just two people uh, you're definitely downsizing. Uh, you don't want to have to feel like, oh my goodness, I have to eat the whole thing because that's going to end up with weight problems and that kind of thing. And that's something that I'm really, really working on myself is to say, okay, well, portion control is, I mean, I can still eat wonderful things. I just have to eat a reasonable portion of it. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Hilltop Stovetop. If uh, most of my videos you would be able to cook for one person. You could minimize the volume of it, or you could freeze them or those sorts of things. Uh, even the pot roast and the ham, slice it all up, put them in baggies and in individual portions and, and freeze it. That works great. So, um, so if you like this, uh, please subscribe. And don't forget in the comments, if there is something you would like to learn how to cook, um, if I know how to make it, I'll give it a shot. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.